Hello, I'm Grant from Makers Vlog, and today, by request, I am uh, doing a video on showing how to do a replay attack. Now, if you've seen the channel before, you, you know what a replay attack is, but for anyone who doesn't, um, go back and watch those videos, and like, and subscribe, and all that. Yeah, yes, you. Yeah. Um, but essentially, a replay attack is you're capturing a, a video signal, usually used in like sort of remote control, so a good example is your car keys. Um, you capture that signal, you save it, and you replay it at a later date and time to effectively open the lock or do whatever the signal was meant to be doing. Uh, there are defences against this, rolling codes, all that good stuff, but for um, a basic signal, it's really easy to attack. So I'm going to be showing you how um, that works and how you go about um, showing off these things. Uh, I'm using a Hack RF1, which I've got, and a wee cheap um, relay, remote control relay circuit, but I'll show you all that when we get into it. Um, and we're also using Universal Radio Hacker, which is uh, a great wee Windows tool. I believe you can get it for Linux as well, but I'm using this on Windows. Um, and it's uh, uh, really good for doing things like this. So let's uh, share my screens and I'll uh, show you what's going on. So whenever you get into um, Universal Radio Hacker, whenever you open up, this is the first thing you see. And an important thing that you need to know before you can do any type of attack like this is you need to know what frequency. Uh, the device is on. Now usually, particularly if you're in America, um, any radio device will have an FCC identification number on it. Um, here in the UK I think there's an equivalent but I've never found it useful to go looking for it. Generally speaking, I, I just sort of look at the specs of the device. Most of them will say if they're 433 MHz or 2.4 GHz or 900 MHz or whatever. Usually they'll say. That just gives you a ballpark. You still need to go in and actually identify the signal that you need. And you can do that in Universal Radio Hacker. So if you go up into File and into Spectrum Analyzer, this will bring up um, the Spectrum Analyzer window where you can select all your settings. Uh, you select your device. For me, I'm using a Hack RF1, but if you're using a different device, you need to find it in that list. Then the device identifier, if you hit refresh on that, it'll then auto populate with the, the good of your device. Um, in here is the frequency in Hertz. So you need to put in, you know, whether it's, in this case, it's 433.92M, which is megahertz. Uh, 0.92 is because I've already went through and done this, so I know what exactly what frequency I need to be on. But if you put that down to, say, 433, so, and if we start, you can leave everything else the same. It will run through and start the spectrum analyzer. That's a peak hold from um, something else. Don't worry about that. But if I hit a button on this, you'll see the um, peaks there. Those, if I stop that, those peaks are where our signal is. And you can literally just click on here, which is where the highest peak are. You can see here there's other wee um, peaks, uh, and these are just harmonics. That's the same same signal, but it it's, um, happens on a, a lower down frequency. We don't really want them. We want this nice, big, juicy one. And if you click on that, it will automatically preload it up here for you, as you can see, which is why mine was abbreviated down to uh, 433.91, because it's close enough. And that's fine. Once you get your frequency, you don't even need to write it down because um, Universal Radio Hacker will remember what frequency you were using, which is nice. So you can just go ahead and close that. And I'm going to show you my little setup here now. Uh, I apologize for the um, shitness of the video. This is a, a cheap webcam I've got running, but uh, you can see here this is the uh, relay, the remote control relay. This is the remote control for it, and my Hack RF1, and it's just hooked up. It's a bit hard to see there because of the white contrast, but this is a red LED. And if I hit this button, you can see it lights up. Hit the button again, it turns off. On, off. Simple as that. And that's the signal that we want to capture. We want to get the signal from that that is um, triggering the relay and turning the LED on. So how we do that is we go back to Universal Radio Hacker and go to the chord signal. Then you see here the frequency is uh, the one that we picked out of the spectrum analyzer. It's remembered that for us. It's also remembered the device, but you need to um, uh, you need to redo the identifier, you need to refresh that, which it'll pick it up again, happy as any. So what we do is hit start on this, and once it starts up, we can then hit the button, 
and record the signal and hit stop. And that's it. That little speck there, that blob, that is our signal. That is what we want. Now we can go in and analyze this. So I'm going to save this. And I have a folder made just for that somewhere. Yep, radio outputs. There's one I did earlier, and I'm going to save that in there. Now, whenever I close out of this, it'll then load it into the project window for us. And in here is where we can go in and start analyzing the signal and all that good stuff. We don't need to do that with this because we know that this is a dumb transmitter. And it's really easy to test that. You don't need to go in and start stripping the um, signal apart to try and determine whether, oh, is this a rolling code? Is it not? Or what is it? There's a really easy way to tell, and that's just to simply transmit the signal again. If it works, you know it's not a rolling code. Um, a lot of people go into very fancy ways of going and dissecting the signal, which is good if you're trying to defeat a complex lock. But for a simple one, you don't need to do it. So all we go is up here, hit replay signal, and there's a little quirk that I've noticed now. I don't know whether this is just with my hack RF1. I don't know whether there's an issue with the um, output power on this, but I need to whack up the gain and the intermediate fre intermediate frequency gain for this to actually be picked up. I don't know why this is. I, I think it's a quirk with my hack RF1, but um, if you whatever device you're using, try it with the default settings. If it doesn't work, um, then you can ramp up the gain and the RF gain. So if I hit start on this, and give it a second, and we should see that getting turned off, and there it goes. And this is going to repeat, so if we just let it run again, it's going to turn it back on, back on. And one more time, we'll let it turn it off, and it turns it off. That is it. That is how simple it is to do a replay attack. So that's it. That is really how easy it is to do a replay attack. Um, and this is why a lot of companies need to be aware of this, especially with IoT devices, some that are doing um, remote, control stu remote control stuff in the house. It is so easy to do this. It is really, really effective. Um, I apologize for the delay on the web. I'm on a webcam here, not my phone, which is why it's cracking up. I apologize for that. I'll, we'll see if I can get a better system put in place for next time. But that is how easy it is. Um, if you want more videos on, on stuff like this, please let me know. Um, like, subscribe, put stuff in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. Um, I've had one person already talking about um, hacking drones and interrupting their signals. And I am working on that. I do have a cheap drone that I'm trying to break into. Um, but it it's a cheap drone. And because it's a cheap drone, it's actually using Wi-Fi protocols, which strangely actually makes it more difficult to crack because it's not using its own two-way communication, which is very strange. But I'm trying to work on that one. Um, but yes, let me know what else you'd like to see. Like, subscribe, all that. And uh, I'll see you later.